Welcome. Um, I uh, was given a, a, a little encouragement this morning to speak on a topic um, that I think you'll find very interesting. Spiritual blindness. Um, try to imagine in your mind what it would be like to be born blind and then at some point, all of a sudden, you can see. You've never seen colors. You've never seen objects or shapes. You have a concept of what that might look like because people have described it to you, but you can't really put into pictures because you don't have a visual baseline to draw from. So everything is completely new. It's almost like entering into a new world, a new existence. That's what spirituality is in some sense of the word. But today I want to talk about a man named Jesus that came up and met a man who was blind by birth. So walking down the street, down Main Street or whatever street there is, Jesus saw a man who was blind from birth. Now, first of all, I want to say he saw the man. He really saw him. Now, I notice people all the time when I'm walking around and doing my daily activities. I see people, but I don't really see them. I maybe see their, their condition and I make a judgment upon them. I see what they are, but I don't really see them. I don't know the heartache and the depth of their struggle or trials or pain or suffering. I, I don't really completely see them because I don't know much about them. I, I just see them. Well, Jesus saw the man. He really saw him. He saw him in such a way he did something. That's love in action. But Noticing the man, the disciples asked him a very interesting question. And this kind of gets to the heart of this passage. Rabbi, which means teacher, and he was talking to Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? So that was, a, that was kind of a, that was an interesting question. I mean, whose blame do we put it on? Was it his parents? I mean, obviously this man is born blind. He's crippled. He's a beggar. He's the lower class of society. He's the dregs of society. Who caused this? That doesn't seem like a very fair God. There must be a reason for this. And Jesus responded by saying, You're asking me the wrong question. <laughs> You're looking for someone to blame. There's no such cause and effect here. I think we do that. We come across traumas and trials and tribulations in our life that we can't understand. We don't, it, it, you can't make sense out of nonsense with some of the things in life. And we want to give blame. We want to give cause. It must be karma. It must be God. It must be the parents. It must be personal sin. It must be the lifestyle. It must be this. It must be that. That's the wrong question to ask. The whys, typically. My granddaughter was asking all kinds of whys. And you try to answer the question as best you can, but why was this man born blind? Why? That was the wrong question to ask. Because if we can give blame to somebody, we can stay in our anger, in our, in our bitterness, and our rage and our resentment. I went through a time like that. I was stuck in an addiction. And I was asking the questions at one point in my life, is this because of me or is it because of my parents or because of both? That's, it's something I had to work through in my life at the time, but that's not ultimately what sets you free. Because you can get stuck in, in just blaming the blame game. And it's circular. It doesn't really ever really solve the problem and the dilemma. And, and so 
the disciples were asking the wrong question. Look instead, is what Jesus said, for what God can do. So, look instead to see what God can do. That's the right question. Instead of just trying to figure out why and putting blame in the circumstance, Jesus is saying, why not ask the question, what can God do? And then he goes on and says, as long as there is day, we must work for him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Yeah, you work during the day. It's, it's kind of challenging to work at night, especially back then when they didn't have lights like we do today. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. The world's dark. It doesn't take very long to turn on the news and come to an understanding or realization that the world is dark. Oh yeah, there's, there's good deeds that happen all over the time, all over the place. There's benevolence, there's people loving and giving and cheer, but it's, it's dark. Winter is dark, and that's why we have Christmas, when Christmas lights to illuminate, to light up the middle of the dark season. Jesus is the light. I'm in the world. I am the light of the world. And that's really interesting because the man born blind was in darkness, complete darkness, from the time he was born. And he was a man, so who knows? He might have been 20, he might have been 30, he might have been 40 or 50 years old. We don't know his age, but we know that he spent many, many years in darkness. The world's in darkness. The world's blind, in a sense. Because everybody's looking at the Democrats or the Republicans or they're looking at the, the Christians or the Muslims. They're looking at atheists. They're looking at this. They're looking at that. They're blaming, 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 blaming because they're in darkness. They don't see the light. Having said this, he spat on the ground. Now, that's interesting. <laughs> Spitting on the ground. Well, today we can't really spit on the ground because of the coronavirus. you got to be wearing a mask. That's not a thing to do. But back then, I guess that was acceptable or just downright strange. But anyway, he spit on the ground. He made some mud with his saliva. That's kind of gross. That's, that's an interesting mixture. He just spit in saliva and put it in the man's eyes. Gross! Why would he do that? That's really bad. I mean, put it on the man's eyes? But he did it. Strange. And he said, go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Okay, go to this pool of scent. And so the man went and washed, <laughs> and he came back seeing. Wow. That's interesting. So Jesus saw the man. He noticed he was blind. He spit on the ground. He put the spit in his eyes. He said, go wash your eyes in the pool of Siloam, and now he could see. Now that's, some people say that's a fairy tale. This is written as a, as a fairy tale. But notice what happens in the discourse. His neighbors who had formerly seen him begging, they knew who he was. I mean, he was a neighbor. You know, a guy that sits down the corner and begs. Isn't it the same man? He used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But they asked him, the blind man, the beggar, and he himself insists, he goes, you know what? I'm the guy. I'm the man. Okay. Question. Well, then how would you, how were your eyes open? They declared. I mean, what? Come on. What's up? What's up? There's got to be a reason for this. Or it's made up. This is either a fairy tale. It's either truth or fiction. They said, what's up? He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and spit it on and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Whoa. That doesn't happen every day. We know you were blind. And now you can see. What is this? Follow, follow my eye. Follow my hand. Yeah. You can't see. 
Where is this man? They asked him. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, he said. I, <laughs> you got me. So they brought him to the Pharisees, which were the religious leaders of the day, because they were the ones who had wisdom, and they were part of the temple, and it was a Jewish society. So they brought him to the Pharisees, the man, and they asked, um, they asked him, the Pharisees asked the man who had been blind, Now, the day in which Jesus had made the mud and opened his eyes was a Sabbath, which to the Jewish culture that was the holy day in which you're not supposed to do any work. So keep the Sabbath holy, do not work. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received the sight. Come on, what's, what's up? Come on, what's gig? What's going on here? And he went and told the story, his testimony. He put mud on my eyes, the man said, and I wash and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. <laughs> now that, that, is, that is one of the most lame questions, responses to show you religious idiocracy idiots idiots it's just when you get into religion to such a degree that you start living by laws and rules and traditions of men and you don't see the miracle that's happened and all you can focus in on is majoring in the minors that it just happened on a saturday and you can't work on the sabbath so he can't be from god well, you put God in a box, you put Jesus in a box, and he'll pop right out. You can't really do that. You can't put, Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, is what Jesus taught. So that was, that was a bogus question. That That's just a deflection, you know. They're trying to, ex to excuse the fact that this man was, was healed, and they couldn't accept it. They, they just doubted. They questioned it. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, but he said, can, can I keep the Sabbath? But the others said, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? Okay, so if he's a sinner, if Jesus is a sinner, how can he do stuff like that? And so they were divided. Yeah, and that's what Jesus does. People either believe him or they don't. He's divided. He's controversial. They either accept him or they reject him. And the synagogue was the same. But they were holding on to their Sabbath rules and saying that Jesus was a sinner because he healed him on the Sabbath. What a bogus claim. Finally, they turned around to the blind man. What have you to say about him? Is your eye, it, it was your eyes he opened? The man replied, yeah, he must be a prophet. The Jews were still, did not believe that he had been blind and they received a sight until they sent for the man's parents. Okay, we want some evidence here. This is a courtroom. We want some evidence. Were you really blind? And so they brought in his parents. Okay, mom and dad, is that your son? They said, this is the one in whom they say was born blind. Is it that now he can see? And the parents responded, they said, we know that he's our son. Yeah, that's our son. Fortunately, they are the evidence. Yeah, that's our son, the parents answered. And we know he was born blind because we nurtured him when he was a baby and he couldn't see. And we had to help him every step along the way. But he can now, but he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. We don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't see the miracle. Ask him. He is of age. He's an adult now. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. So, there's social pressure there. Societal pressure. If you believe in Jesus, man, you're going you're gonna to lose your society. And, and so he was a Jew. This man was a Jew. He was blind. His parents were Jewish. They were part of the synagogue. And now they didn't want to take ownership because they didn't want to get kicked out. So they, were, they really had a dilemma. Do we believe our son? We see that he was blind. We know he was born blind, but now he can see. And Do we stay with traditions of men and the Pharisees and our security blanket here, these, these re religious leaders, or do we believe our son? They were confused. They were divided over what to do with this whole thing. 
So they they kind of they kind of skirmished out of it and said, "Ask him; he's of age." The second time they summoned the man. The second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he's a sinner or not, the man, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. And that's it, you know, spiritual blindness. The world's blind. They don't see the invisible God who created the whole world. They see only the pain and suffering and problems. They don't see the God behind it all. Or they blame God for the pain and the suffering and the sorrows. Therefore, that God is not a God of love and healing like Jesus showed himself or demonstrated himself. He must be a sinner. He must be an evil entity, that God. Then they ask him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? Come on, give us the facts. We just want the facts. That's all we want. He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? I mean, come on. We went through this roller coaster ride already. Why are you keep on doing this? Do, do you want to become his disciples too? Do you want to start following him? And then they hurled insults at him. Hey, they were angry at that. And they said, you are this, this fellow's disciple. We can tell you're a disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We cling to Moses and the law. We know that God spoke on Moses, but as for this fellow Jesus, we don't know where he comes from. Hardened hearts cannot see. Hardened hearts are blind. Hardened hearts. Do not feel. Hardened hearts are sick. The man answered. Now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. Wow. You don't know where he's come from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to, God, to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. And that that's not something that happens every day. This type of miracle. If this man is not from God, he could do nothing. There's no power to open a man's eyes that were blind unless he was from God. To this they replied, you are steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. That's what pride does. That's what power and control does. That's what the spirit of blindness does. Because it can't answer the question. It can't conceive of faith. Therefore, we need to eradicate, we need to eliminate, we need to isolate, we need to judge and distance ourselves. And, okay, this man was born blind. He must have been because of sin. So that, that was an interesting question the disciples asked Jesus. Now, spiritual blindness. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. This guy was kicked out of the synagogue. His social security, his social norms, his people, his friends, his family, he was out. And he found him and said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Well, sir, who is he? Tell me, so I may believe on him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus didn't rebuke him for worshipping him. Jesus didn't stop him from worshipping him. He allowed him to worship him. 
Jesus said, For judgment I have come into the world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. In other words, those who don't have it together, those who are physically blind, or those who can't see, they're stuck in their addictions or compulsions, they're stuck in life, I'm going to open the way so that they can see. But those who have all the answers, the Pharisee spirit, the, the controlling spirit, the, the righteousness spirit, I'm going to make them blind. That's interesting. Those who have all the answers, I'm going to make them so they can't see. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him and said this, What are we blind to? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. That's interesting. You claim you have it all together. You claim you have the answers. You claim that you are the way. That's a bad path to go. Open my eyes. Let me see. Because I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I have more questions than I have answers. But I do know this. I believe with all my heart Jesus opened this man's eyes that was born blind. Can you explain it through science? No way. Can you explain it emotionally or mentally? No way. The only way you can explain it is that it either happened or it was a complete lie. And if it happened, which I do believe it did, then Jesus is God that deserves to be worshipped. If not, then fuck him. Because it's a big, big lie. I don't know. The man knew himself that he was born blind. His parents knew it. His friends knew it. Everybody else knew it. The religious people, those who were in the quote the know, didn't want to face it because they had to do something with their own heart, their own spiritual blindness. It's a tough message, but true. So, I'm not done yet, thank you. Appreciate the clap. Amen. I'm going to give you one song to sum up this message, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Sung by Michael W. Smith. It's a worship song. I saw Michael W. Smith live. He picked up Amy. He raised her up at the concert. And he said, I love you. True, true. Listen to the words.
So, the just really quick conclusion here. We have a heart that needs to see God. And we allow the trials and tribulations, the ugliness of this life, to blind us. In truth, open my eyes. You can be a Pharisee and deny it, or you can be a believer. Allow the Spirit to open up your eyes. Thank you.